pump, a tractor to pump, and I pump that thing full. And it takes about three days for it to pump full. And once you pump that full, that starts that zooplankton at, at the lowest level, the little tiny, tiny zooplankton. And then that's what the these walleyes will start to eat. If you don't drain it, the bugs will be big enough to eat the walleyes. That's kind of why we drain it to start over, you know, so nature kind of takes its course as far as feeding them. Once they start hatching, they're, just, they're kind of popping down here a little bit. Then once they get some little bit of age on them, they'll swim to the top and gradually they'll come out the top and go down this tube into the tank. And there's 30,000 eggs to a pint, and that jar probably has about four pints in it. Three and a half wow. pints. The, the first bunch of eggs, I got a guy in Colorado, another dealer, that wants uh, 750,000 walleye fry. And what we've done is measured the eggs. There's 30,000 eggs to a pint. We measured these five jars, and there's there's about 300 to 25,000 fry in them or eggs in them jars. Now once they hatch, we got them separated here uh, in these two tanks. And what we'll do is put this light here, and once the fry gets made on them, they'll swim to that light. And then we'll take a white pan and kind of dip them up, put them in plastic bags and oxygen, put them in the pickup, and haul them. And then hopefully, once he gets them delivered, hopefully that next batch starts to hatch, and I'll do the same thing over again to get him his, his quantity that he wants. Mm -hmm. And then probably the last few jars, what we'll start stocking. Stock, we got about five lakes that we got stocked for our own personal use. Now, once, once these walleyes get stocked in our ponds, uh, they start eating that plankton. They'll be two inches by July or June 15th, three inches by July and August, four inches in August, August, September. And then once we get some minnows on them and feeding them, they'll be five, six, seven inches by October and November. By fall, we'll sell anywhere from, oh, well, of the bigger size, you know, eight to 20 some thousand, then five inch ones. But the smaller ones, the two inch ones, sometimes we'll sell anywhere from 30 to 40,000 of them. What we try to do is some of them ponds, if it doesn't have enough plankton, or if we don't get enough rain during, during the year to, to wash some, uh, the nitrate level, get the nitrate up so the bugs come. Uh, sometimes the walleyes turn camelistic on each other and they eat each other. So instead of having 20,000, I might have four or 500 like that. And we'll stick, we'll stick some of them in our lake, keep replenish our lake every year with them. Okay. Uh, we think right now our lake's a little bit low on, on walleyes. Uh, we probably gill netted maybe 140, 150 walleyes this year for spawn reasons. So I know this year we're going to start throwing some in our lake a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. Yep. Okay. Maybe he's not swimming. You got a war out, Todd. Mm. <laughs> the males in that bucket playing long. We got to talking instead. Anyway. You know, the, the spring of the year is probably our, our busiest time. There's just not enough hours in the day. Uh, as soon as the snow gets gone, the ice gets off the pond, you know, the first thing we got to do is, is gill net at night. Uh, we set them nets about 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, and then we check them at 7 at night. Or uh, we set them at 5, 6, and we check them at midnight, and then we'll come back and pick them up at 6 in the morning. And by the time we, we get done in the fish house, we're usually crawling in bed about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we try to take shifts on who who runs what nights and stuff like that, but some nights you run a couple nights in a row and it gets kind of wore out. But then during the day, uh, we're trying to get everything organized because the phone starts ringing and people are wanting to pick up fish or put a fish order in. Well, I gotta catch all the fish out of the ponds that we've wintered in, bring them into these holding bins and start getting them ready to deliver. And so the day might start out at 6.30 at picking up the nets out of the lake. Uh, 
come in, strip the, the female walleyes, uh, the eggs out of them, and then we'll string the nets out, and then I'll get the sand and ponds, or if somebody's picking up fish during the day, uh, or fixing, fixing screens and getting things ready for the year, and he's usually in there taking care of the eggs and siphoning them, them white ones out, and then we clean the eggs about, or clean the nets about three o'clock, four o'clock, and then set them again. So the first month, month usually April, we're going about 16, 18 hours a day. Somebody is, you know, three or four of us. Uh, once we get past the walleyes out of the jars, then it kind of gets back to normal sleeping hours again. So uh, it's it's farming. You gotta you gotta live with them, uh, take care of them. You can't just uh, go home and crawl in bed and forget about them. Some nights, uh, like right now, somebody's here 24 hours a day. We got two pumps that are running to them walleye eggs, and uh, if electricity goes off and one of them pump quits, we got about 20 minutes to get water to them eggs uh, before we start getting some mortality in the eggs a little bit, especially now they're, they're starting to hatch. So somebody's here watching the eggs and making sure water's flowing you know, all the time. Now these, these are kind of the last tail end of the, of the spawning season. You can see there's April 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Uh, the eggs are starting to eye, but the ones that, that didn't survive turn white. Uh, and what they do is just like a, a bad apple and a bushel of good apples kind of gets contaminates the rest and, and gets a fungus on them. So what we have to do is uh, Steve here sits here and siphons them white ones out. Uh, the white ones are lighter, they're not as dense, so they float to the top. Mm -hmm. And he sit there with a little siphon hose and siphon them out. If he didn't siphon them out, all them bad eggs would attach to a good egg, and sooner or later that good egg would go bad too. He spends hours. How many hours you spent there, Steve? Over <laughs> six. <laughs> Probably six, seven hours a day for the last uh, week and a half. Wow. So he works pretty hard at that. Now over here, when we're gill netting for the for the walleyes on the northern, we start once the walleyes are done, we start from across. Uh, perch eggs. Now these perch eggs here, these are all perch eggs. They're getting about hatched, this group is. What they do is let the perch lay, lay them in a tube, oh, okay. kind of. Alright, there's still some little perch eyes in there, but uh, they hatch right here in this tank. And then what I do is, is uh, take them out of this tank once they hatch and put them into a pond that there's nothing else in. Kind of same deal. These are all about done. This one, kind of, so it's kind of a tube. But once once they start hatching, the, the tube kind of falls apart. Now these over here, a couple days later, right? They're still kind of in a tube. They haven't quite hatched yet. So they're they're coming all right. But with this water temperature, they kind of sat in here a little bit too long this year, as far as the temperature of the water. You kind of got to fluff them up a little bit and knock that silt, dirty water off them every day or so. The most time they hatch within about seven, eight days too. How long have you been in there? Oh, about a week. Start off the season when we start gilling, as soon as the ice goes off, northerns are the first thing to spawn. Uh, so as soon as as soon as we get a net in the water, we usually set nets for, for the northerns. And once we catch them, we put them into the, these two holding bins here. And what we do with these is I drain them July 4th and keep them dry, dry all July, August, September. And that grass, as you can see out here, kind of grows up. And it gets pretty thick, you know, through the whole pond. And in the spring, I'll pump this full and flood it. And what the northerns do, once I catch them on the lake, I'll put seven males and seven females in each one of these. And what they do is the female will, will sow his eggs, her eggs, in that grass, and the males swim right beside it and fertilize it. And they'll throw their eggs right on that grass, and they're sticky, just like the mall eggs, and they'll stick to that grass. And they'll hatch, hatch right on that grass, and uh, it'll depend on water temperature how long it takes to hatch, but they'll hang on to that grass as long as possible. Right now, they're just at the age where they're just about ready to start swimming on their own. But uh, I checked this morning, we, we did catch a few little, little uh, northerns. They're not very dang big.
Yeah, I got quite a few really. See, they were still ha they were still attached to that grass a little bit. I don't know if you can see them yep. or not, but they're just they're just ready to. They used up all their yolk sac, which they they live about two three days on the yolk sac. They're ready for a little zooplankton, and that's that little bug stuff you see floating out of this bucket. Okay, that might be pretty hard to see. All of them down there on the bottom, maybe we get a white pan. Yep, I can see. You see them pretty good. Yep. But it's just kind of funny, is the the moms are probably 12 to 15 pounds in there. The dads are probably five to six, and then then the little northerns. Now northerns, if water temperature gets warm. These guys will be three inches and in probably two and a half weeks. Wow. They grow quick. If you've got a middle on them, you know, at three inches, they can be five to six inches in, in less than five weeks. So they grow pretty quick as long as they got the food source. That stays laying on the bottom, I take it. Yep, it's got sinkers gonna, on the bottom and bobbers on the top. You're going to have them corralled in. Hopefully. Now yeah, that's a way to fish. Only way I know how. These are little bluegills. Well, like this year with the hard winter, there was quite a few winter kills where people called and said their pond, they found big bass dead. And like so this year we've got quite a few of them, them calls. Seemed like last year there was a lot of new ponds made where they're stocking it for the first time. And then you also get calls of people that are just wanting to restock it, give it a little jump start, and they're adding like half the amount, bluegills and bass, kind of helping things along a little bit. So hopefully it's a good year for you then? It should be. Worst thing about it is I sold so many fish last year that I'm kind of short coming into this spring on numbers that I'm, I'm carrying. Where we got to get into the hatch and hatch new ones. Like right now, usually I'm sitting on about 20,000 bass. I don't have very many right now. So then I won't have bass available until June. So that's going to kind of hurt some of my orders a little bit, but that's the way it goes. This guy, uh, two guys, neighbors. Uh, called and uh, the first guy his pond winter killed out last year so he's wanting to get some some bluegill started in it uh, first and then he's going to come back and add a few more bass he's going to take 50 bass today and then come back and add some more bass add some catfish you know once these bluegills get going and his neighbor 
that has a three acre pond. I think he just wants to give his pond a little jump start on some bluegills. I think the bass population is a little high and eating down all those bluegills, so he's wanting to put some bluegills in there to, to help it along. So they're really going to two guys. One guy's going to take 300, another guy's taking 500 regular straight bluegills, and then he's going to take a couple grass carp and 50 bass. Now th these bluegills came out of about an acre, acre and a half pond that uh, last year I drained it down, the rain filled it full, I put some pairs of bluegills out, males and females, and then these are the little ones that came out of there. Uh, they're kind of pretty thick in that pond, so they're not really big, big as I like to have them to sell, but we thinned out, or we sand out maybe five, 6,000 the other day and put this holding bin, you know, kind of harden them up a little bit so we can haul them and bag them and move them around stuff. But hopefully once I thin them down a little bit, that by June and July, they'll be nice four inch bluegills you know, in that pond that we're taking them out of. The more we take out, the ones that are left are gonna grow and get bigger then. We still hand, hand count them. Uh, a lot of guys weigh them, and what they do is, is they, they'll put them in a bucket, uh, pour them in a basket and weigh that basket, but the fish are sitting there out of the water flopping and it, it hurts them pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, 